Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around a Table, and here is your first look at Catan Treasures, Dragons, and Adventurers. And I say first look is a little bit misleading because it's not exactly a new product, it's just new in this edition. It was originally released in 2009 and then again in 2015 because as if you know Catan, they're, and I, by the way, it's pronounced correctly Catan, but I say Catan because I have a beard. So they release new editions of Catan regularly over the years and as they do, they update some of their stuff. And so this is an update. This is Treasures, Dragons and Adventurers to work with the current, I believe, fifth edition Catan stuff. Now what this is, is this is for Catan super fans. This is not like, oh, I heard about this game Catan, I might check it out. No, there's the door. <laughs> Don't let it hit you where the good Lord split you. This is not a product for you. What this is for, is the type of Catan player who liked Catan but it got stagnant so then that person picked up uh, Seafarers of Catan and then enjoyed the maps and Seafarers and then oh, do I, let's make it a little bit more spicy and then picked up Cities and Knights of Catan and then that player, if this is you, decided no, oh, let's combine Seafarers and Cities and Knights and thought that that just got a little bit stale out of 50,000 plays. So now this is the next step. What this is gonna require you to do is to set up Catan, and then set up Seafarers, and then set up Cities and Knights. So this is a pastiche on top of that. Let's just open the box, I'll see what you get inside. Now, I didn't call this an unboxing because they sent it to me with no shrink wrap on it. That's how I know I got something pretty special. They were like, oh, get it to the guy, don't even, don't even shrink wrap it, just throw it to his house, and here it is. So I've, I've already peeked at what's inside. So I won't be too surprised at what, what we find in there, but here a picture of Catan Studio hoarding the bazillions of dollars they've made on this game. And then inside, ooh, box fartometer one. Just a tiny little poot of a hello, it's Catan. Uh, so these are the, we're gonna, this is really important, so we'll go through that in a sec. But what you get is a baggie full of wood including some extra cities that you're gonna need, but the most interesting piece in here, of course, if I can get my fat fingers in there, is a dragon piece, and that's what the dragon meeple looks like. And you get, you just, it's not just one dragon, like the cover just shows one dragon, but they're like, no, 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 we're gonna have to overload them with dragons if we want this thing to be successful. So you get a whole, here's the bag, blarp. You get like a whole big old, Grove of dragons? What is the collective noun for dragons? If I was running a giveaway, that would be the question, and then you'd answer and I'd give you something, but uh, that didn't happen this time, did it? No, but tell me in the comments what the collective noun for, you know what I mean by collective noun, right? Like a murder of crows, it's a of dragons. Uh, these are canal pieces. What's that all about? Well, I'll show you in just a second. These are little flags, and these flags go on your dragon's bums. And why would you want to put a flag on a dragon's bum, you ask? Again, I'll show you when we get into the book and, and check out what, what's going on. And then you get uh, a bunch of extra... These are required for the different scenarios. So you get a bunch of extra hexes of the land types that we've seen before, and a bunch of different number chits. So nothing too fancy there, a bunch of extra water pieces. Again, these are to build the maps that you're gonna to require to do these six scenarios. And so the only really uh, interesting piece in here that you may not have seen before, uh, as I shove the close-up can stuff, it's like, get out of here, dragons, nobody wants you in their lives. So these are treasure tokens that when you discover you're gonna turn it, there's gonna be some sort of reward in the back. So this is a build, build two roads treasure tile. You've got other ones that give you development cards and you know, ones that give you knights and things like that. So, uh, or, you know, collections of cards, things like that. That's what's going on. So those are all the pieces that you get in the game. So. I mean, nothing too spectacular so far, right? So let's take a look at, or maybe, I don't know, maybe you're sitting there going, oh my God, oh, you get treasure tokens. I don't know what impresses you, but inside the book, like I said, there were six scenarios and there have been different digital versions of Catan over the years. I remember I had one uh, very long ago for my early, like second generation iPhone. And then they came up with Catan Universe and Cities and Nights and a bunch of different digital versions of the game. And in those different digital versions of the game, there have been different scenarios. And so what they've done is they've grabbed the most popular ones and cobbled them together into a six scenario 
scenario product. So that's what this is. So when we look in here, this is scenario number one. This is called the Treasure Islands. And according to the notes, this first appeared in the PC game, Cities and Nights. So what you do is you set up the map like this. Some of these scenarios are gonna use the pirate ship, and some of them are gonna use the robber, some of them are gonna use both, sometimes they don't use the robber. I won't mention that any more than I just have, so uh, just so you know. And then some of them break the night rules a little bit, you'll see, you'll see. So with this one, you set up the map so that it looks like this, and everybody starts in here, so this is where all the land tiles are, and you bust out to the different treasure islands, and those treasure tokens that I just showed you are on these islands. So you get treasures, you, flee, you go over here, build boat routes, and you flip the treasure tokens, and you get stuff. So that's what that one looks like. The second scenario of six is called Into the Unknown. And in this one, you're on this strip of land over here, and there's this big old island to explore with different treasure tokens all over it. So it's sort of like a different feel or flair to the first scenario, it's like a different map. And so you have to you know, set out by boat from here into the land. And so this is this is like, hmm, how do I explain it? So there are little islands on this one. You start on the big island and you go out to the little ones, but then it's sort of like the reverse with this one. There's a huge unexplored island. So if you like the idea, and you may know from Seafarers, if you played Seafarers, that when you go to a new tile and it doesn't exist or it's flipped over to its wrong side, when you uh, boat out to it, you get to flip it and see what's there. So if you like that idea of a lot of like unknown, like what's well, on the other side of the tile, man, then this is the kind of thing that you might be into. Plus all the treasures that you get when you, you build on the intersections of those. Scenario number trois, oh, by the way, and they have different map layouts depending on the number of players, right? So that is what Into the Unknown looks like at four players, and that's what it looks like at three players. And according to the notes of Into the Unknown, that was originally from Treasures, Dragons, and Adventurers, the original copy of this that was published in 2009. But this has stuff that wasn't in that 2009 edition. Flipping the page to Greater Catan. Three players, four players. So the Greater Catan scenario has you starting in the middle on this big island and has big chunks of undiscovered land at the edges. And what's unique about this one, this is from Catan Universe, by the way, what's unique about this one is that the resources run out while you're playing. So I believe the way it works, and I haven't played any of these myself, but you, you start from the middle island and you go out here to these side islands and you start discovering them. And normally what you do is you have like a blind bag full of your number tokens and when you discover an undiscovered hex, you pull a number token blindly and stick that number token on the hex. But there are a limited number of number tokens and so when those run out from your container or your bag that you're blind drawing from, you actually start pulling the number tokens from the main island and putting them out here. So that means that if you're camped out, you know, if you've got a settlement or a city on the main island, it may happen that you have to pull a number token off of it and stick it on one of these undiscovered islands on the edges, right? So the resources that you get from the hexes that you're camped out on are not long for this world. They don't last forever. So that, I mean, that sounds kind of interesting, doesn't it? If you're big into Catan Universe, maybe you've played this scenario already and you can tell me if it is interesting or you say, actually, Ryan, I believe it stinks. You tell me down in the comments whether you think this is cool or not. Flipping the page, now we finally, so those first three scenarios have nothing to do with dragons and now we get into there are two, there are two th that uh, do involve dragons. Desert Dragon scenario number four is the first one. So what happens is there are deserts up in this top corner and there's this big undiscovered band of land out here and everybody starts in this section. And every time you build a settlement after the setup phase, the deserts are going to start accruing dragon tokens. So the, de the dragons are gonna start piling up on those deserts. And then uh, ever after, when you roll numbers and you roll a number, uh, on a hex that a dragon is adjacent to, those dragons start moving to those hexes. So the dragons start in the deserts, they, they accumulate in the deserts, and then they start moving and spreading out across that island. Oh wait, I should show you, let me get some pieces from my base game and I'll show you what happens when a dragon actually takes over a chunk of land that you're on. Okay, so here it is. Obviously, this isn't a full setup, but let's say there's a couple dragons that start on the desert here, and then a six gets rolled. So one of these dragons goes on to the six. So just like the robber, you're used to this, the dragon is going to steal your resources. So whenever a six is rolled, you're not gonna produce any wood on here for this settlement. But also, this road 
gets turned sideways like that. So that means that if that was part of like your longest road gambit, now that road doesn't count anymore. If you've got knights that have to travel on roads, they're not gonna be able to travel on a sideways road anymore. And then I haven't put out all the other hexes, but if you get a situation where the, you know, the dragons are gonna be coming more and more, if they surround an entire hex, even if they're not on it, then they totally blot out that hex and that hex doesn't produce anymore either. So the dragons are bad news. Generally, you don't want dragons. It's like a rule in life, isn't it? Generally, you don't want dragons. And then what you're trying to do is build out here and get shipping routes going uh, and get your knights across to this side and sort of run away from the dragons. By the way, I should mention, if the dragons surround uh, settlement or a city, then that structure isn't worth any points to you anymore either. So dragon's bad. So you sort of flee out to this island in order to build up resources and get away from the dragons. And then when you make knights, when you flip them, I don't believe there's a robber in this scenario. When you flip your knights, instead of repelling a robber, you can kick a dragon's butt and knock it off the hex. So you're using your knights to fight the dragons that are coming from the desert and taking over the whole map. And that is the desert dragon scenario number four. Uh, onto something interesting and weird. This one is really different. So this is called the Great Canal, scenario number five. No dragons in this one, but it starts with like a lake here and a desert here, and you put all these little Catan tokens going in this sort of like swoopy swoo going down to the desert. So the idea is you're using your knights in order to dig a canal to get the mountain lake water down into the desert. So when you use your knights, you actually need two knights. See, it shows in the picture. Maybe I'll throw it on the close-up cam so that you can see. So you need like a knight on either side. They could both be your knights or they could be your knight and an opponent's knight. And when those knights are finally flipped, then uh, these two Catan tokens go to the owners of the knights. And of course, you could get both of those if you've got both knights on there. And so those are worth a point to you. And then when you flip them, you actually put one of those canal pieces that we saw. Let me dig those out. Right here, the canal pieces, sometimes they go around a bend because as you can see from the map, they're gonna have to go around corners in some places. And so you're just using your knights to dig this canal all the way down. So because there are a lot more points on the map in order for you to earn, this one ends when you reach 21 points. And finally, scenario number six in Catan, Treasures, Dragons, and Adventurers. This one is where the dragon bum stickers come into play. So everybody starts in this big section. And then over here is Scary Bad Dangerous, Dragon land. You got all the dragons and you're supposed to shuffle the dragons up because those flags I mentioned go on the dragon's butts. And let's take another close look at what the flags look like. So notice that they've got a uh, little one, two, and three sort of pennant triangles on them, indicating the strength of the dragon. So maybe you see where this is going. So the stickers go on the dragon's butts or feet or whatever, so you can't tell which dragon is which, and all those dragons get parked on this island. So the idea is you build up resources here, you build routes across to the island, you send your knights over, and a regular knight can fight a dragon with a single triangle pennant. But if you go and you activate a knight, you flip it over and then you look at the butt of the dragon and you've got just a regular knight and it's a double triangle pennant, well, that needs a strong knight to defeat it and your knight's not good enough. Now, you don't lose the knight, the knight just is deactivated, so you kind of wasted a wheat on activation. And it's, so I guess it's like a little bit of a memory game. Everybody has to remember which dragon has which strength when you send the knights across to fight it. And then you have to build up your knights so, you know, if you, have terrible luck and you activate a knight with wheat and you flip it and you look at the dragon's butt and it's like a triple dragon, well, you're gonna need a mighty knight to defeat that dragon. So you're gonna have to go get more, what is it, sheep and ore, I believe, to upgrade your knight uh, eventually to a mighty knight to be able to fight dragons or maybe uh, move to another section of the island so that you can find a weaker dragon to fight and repel. The other thing that's kind of interesting in this, this one's called the Enchanted Land, is once your knights get over to that Enchanted Land, to that island with dragons on it, they no longer need roads to move around. So you don't have to constantly build routes. They can just kind of like travel along the intersections between the hexes without needing you to build stuff for them. So it's like a it's like a knight free for all when you get across there. And so the rule book tells us that the Enchanted Land has been a scenario that's been included in 
it was in uh, Catan News. Uh, I guess that's a magazine about Catan, and it's been in various uh, digital adaptations of Catan. I've never played it myself. I've never played the Enchanted Land, but maybe if you're a Catan super fan, you've played all this stuff before. You're like, oh my gosh, they're making a physical version of it again. I don't know. Is this is this cool? Is this exciting? Are you a Catan super fan? Are you interested in Catan treasures, dragons, and adventurers? Let me know in the comments. If you like, put a thumb. If you don't like, put a no thumb. Please subscribe. I've got a new thing. This new thing is called The Road to 100K. If I could get to 100,000 subscribers on this channel, I will die a very happy man. And I may in fact die trying to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, I can see that a number of you haven't, then that's just uh, lots more clicks to request from you. So click those magical three buttons. One looks like a thumb either up or down, one says subscribe, and one is a bell so that you'll get notifications. Notice that you can click the subscribe button and not click the bell so you don't get notifications. Hmm, that, I mean, all of the buttons help me, but if you don't want to get harassed, I guess, if you don't want to know when I've got new stuff, don't click the alarm bell. But if you like this stuff, you want to hear more about Catan. Catan Studio, by the way, is sending me a copy of Seafarers of Catan. And I know a bunch of you have requested a how to play Seafarers of Catan video. So once that arrives at my door and I've got it in my hot little hands, I'm going to work very hard on a video to teach that game to you. Let me know what's cool. Let's chat. Maybe you can hop on the Discord server and say hello. I'm there uh, all day, every day, Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes past my bedtime. And if you really, really like what goes on this channel and you want to support it and help it to continue, I have a Patreon campaign. <laughs> Currently, at the time of me shooting this video, it is the second poetry month, which means I'm writing a custom poem for anybody who backs me at any level. And it's not to say that if you only back me for a buck, you're going to get uh, an extremely insulting poem that will be on the internet forever and it'll be hard for you to get it scrubbed from Google. Uh, I just, I, I write as the muse directs me. And really the words don't come from me, they come from somewhere beyond, they flow through me. So if you're watching this now, like now, now, and you'd like me to write a poem for you, consider backing me on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe, and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.